Hey, this is Professor Perez. Today, we are going to look at the distributive property. But before we get started, we need to get out our student volunteer. Charlie, he better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? All right, let's get started. Right there, the distributive property. The distributive property basically states that when you're multiplying into a parenthesis, you can multiply or distribute across an addition or a subtraction symbol. Only addition or a subtraction symbol can you do this. So here's some variables. Now we're going to multiply x times a plus x times b. Well notice here I wrote ax for x times a. Remember by the commutative property a times x is the same as x times a. Now when you have two variables and you put them next to each other with no operation in between, that means multiplication. So, let's do another one here. Here we have a subtraction in the parentheses and we do a times x subtract a times y. That demonstrates the distributive property. Notice we basically remove the parentheses. Here we have 4 times 10 plus 1. 4 times 10 is 40 plus 4 times 1 is 4. Here we have 13 times 10 subtract 2. 13 times 10 is 130, subtract 13 times 2 is 26. This demonstrates how to use the distributive property. The distributive property states that multiplication can be distributed across addition and subtraction. Basically, we use this property to remove parentheses. And we also use it to help us with our multiplication table. In the last video, we showed that 4 times 11 can be done as 4 times 10 plus 1, right? And 13 times 8 can be done as 13 times 10 subtract 2. So let's try some more problems here. Suppose we had 9 times 12. Let's rewrite the 12 in expanded form as 10 plus 2. And we break it down. We're using some Kung Fu here. 9 times 10 is 90, and 9 times 2 is 18. And so we add those two together, and we get 108. There you go. 9 times 12 is 108. We're using the distributive property. 8 times 12, well that's 8 times 10 plus 2, and we distribute. 8 times 10 is 80, 8 times 2 is 16, and we add those two together, and we get 96. 8 times 12 is 96. 13 times 11, well, we rewrite the 11 as 10 plus 1, right? And distribute. 13 times 10 plus 13 times 1, and we get 143. 14 times 9. Let's try this. Let's write the 9 as 10 subtract 1. And notice we put it in parentheses. And now we distribute. 14 times 10 subtract 14 times 1. That's 140 subtract 14, which gives us 126. That's 14 times 9. It's important to have good subtraction skills, right? Because that'll help you with learning your multiplication tables. Now, 2 times 43. Well, here, we'll go ahead and rewrite the 43 in expanded form as 40 plus 3. And now, we will use the distributive property. 2 times 40 is 80, plus 2 times 3 is 6, and 80 plus 6 is 86. There you go. Well, some of you might be saying, I'm just going to use the vertical format. Well, if you use the vertical format, you're actually doing that. You're using the distributive property. That's why this vertical format works, because it makes use of the distributive property. Watch. To do this in the vertical format, you're going to do 2 times 3, which is 6. We did that over here. And then we do 2 times 4, which is 8. But that 4 is in the tens place. So when you do 2 times 4, it's actually 80. And you bring down the 8, and it's 86. Well, remember, 86 in expanded form is 80 plus 6. So you're actually doing the same thing in either of these calculations. OK, let's try some more here. Let's do 6 times 134. Let's rewrite the 134 in expanded form. 100 plus 30 plus 4. And now let's distribute. 6 times 100 is 600, plus 6 times 30 is 180, plus 6 times 4 is 24. Now we add these up, we'll work left to right. 600 plus 180. What is it, Charlie? 780. Very nice. And add 24. What's 780 plus 24, Charlie? 804. Very nice there, Charlie. It's 804. Suppose we want to use the vertical format. Well, here's how it works. You're basically doing this. It's all in there, just kind of hidden. 6 times 4 is 24. So we put the 4 down, carry the 2. And then we do 6 times 3, which is 18. 
and we add the 2, right? And that gives us 20. We put the 0 down, carry the 2. And now we do 6 times 1, which is 6, add 2, and you get 804. It's the same answer as this one over here. Well, when you're multiplying a number by a single number, like in this case, we're multiplying 134 by the number 6, we can avoid carryover, and we can use what we call the distributive properly directly. Watch. This is what I mean. And you can only do this when you're multiplying by a single digit, like a 6 or a 7 or an 8. Let's try this. 6 times 4 is 24. So let's write down 24. Okay, now we're going to move to the 6 times 3. But because the 3 is in the tens place, we put a 0 as a placeholder. And now we do 6 times 3, which is 18, and bring that down. Now we do 6 times 1. The 1 is in the hundreds place. So we put two zeros as a placeholder and write down 6 times 1. And notice here, we add these up. That's doing this distributive property directly, right? You just add the numbers together, just like you did over here. And you don't forget to carry over that 1, and you do get 804. So there you go. That demonstrates the distributive property. So we'll see you again soon.